Well, this is a Professor Cummings, and I wanted to go over uh, first order linear differential equations. Uh, more specifically, I want to go over the integrating factor, because that's a concept to its first order linear that is sometimes not easy for people to understand. So we'll uh, do this short video, kind of going through it, how you derive it, and what it's supposed to do, you know, what the full, full function of an integrating factor is. So this is just a little bit of review. Um, uh, for the standard form of a uh, linear differential equation. This is a first order linear differential equation. You can see that this is the first derivative of y with respect to x. So it makes it a first order linear differential equation. And what we can see is that, you know, it's not intuitive as to how to integrate this at first glance. You know, so it's, but it does have a way, a form we can put this in to make it easier to integrate. But before we do it, I want to go over, you know, what it is we're looking at. We're looking at the, you know, y, the derivative of y with respect to x plus p of x times y is equal to f of x. So we can see here what we're, we're dealing with is you've got a, a variable of y and then you've got the first derivative of y with respect to x. Like I said, offhand, it's not easy to see how to integrate this. But if we take this equation and we look at another one that's very similar to this, that we do know how to integrate, because you know we can actually start to see how to build this equation, this first order linear, into an equation that can be very easy to integrate, almost integrated just by looking at it. Now what we have here is the product rule. You know, if you have two terms or two variables, f times f of x times uh, g of x and you want to take the derivative of those two terms, it is just the derivative of x times g of x, or derivative of f of x times g of x, plus the derivative of g of x times f of x. Now if we wanted to take the antiderivative of this, we wanted to integrate both sides of this, you could see how this integration, or integrating this side, will just simply bring you back to this derivative, you know, uh, f of x times g of x. You know, this is the derivative. This is what the you know the equivalent of that derivative is the product rule. If we wanted to integrate this, all you're doing is taking the antiderivative of a derivative, and you end up with the argument of f of x and g of x. All right. So there you've got you know the same deal. You've got a variable, and you've got a derivative. Same as with the standard form of a first order linear differential equation. Okay, so you can see we got the, the two here. You know, you got a, a variable and a derivative. I'm just pointing to f of x and g of x. I could have just as easily had these on g and g of uh, g of x and g prime of x, but you know, it's just f f prime of x times f of x. So we got two derivatives, or we got a variable and a derivative, and you know they're being added together. But the difference is instead of just having a coefficient of p of x over here, you've, now you've got the derivative of g of x and you've got a, a variable that goes with it that's not accounted for in the standard form. So what we need is a term that actually completes this product rule. You know, takes the standard form and makes it more like the product rule itself that we see over here. So what can we do to actually, or what would it take, what term we need, this we're going to call it u of x, to make one, you know, this this term more like the, or this standard form more like the product rule. Well, that term would have to have a couple of things to make this work. You know, the first, it would have to serve as the variable. In this case, it would have to serve as a g of x, you know, to multiply by this derivative of y. That's the first thing it has to be able to do. We need a term that can serve as a variable for g of x. It also when multiplied by p of x, when multiplied by this p of x, it has to be a derivative. You know, so it has to match here. So it has to not only work as the variable that multiplies by the first derivative of f of x, or f prime of x, it has to actually, when multiplied by p of x, it has to be a derivative of g of x. So it has to be a g prime of x. You know, if we can find a term that works and does both of these things, it, is the, it can function as a g of x as well as function as a g prime of x when multiplied by p of x, we can actually make this work. We can actually make it so that this uh, standard 
a form of a linear differential equation is very easy to di differentiate. We end up with this derivative, you know, f of x times g of x, which would just be whatever term this u of x is multiplied by the term, the original term of f prime of x, or, you know, y. You know, and then the antiderivative would just be this u of x times y. You know, so again, you could just find, you're just knowing what the terms are and what the derivatives are once we have this u of x. And if it does, you know, complete, you know, satisfy the equation, we can actually use that and multiply it through. Of course, we'd also have to multiply it through by f of x. So what we could do is we come up with things, we'll call it an integrating factor, this u of x, multiply it by both sides of the standard form equation. So we end up with u of x times dy of x plus p of x times y, you know, this whole quantity, you know, uh, uh, distributed through, is equal to u of x times f of x. So it's still, the equation still works. It's, we've just multiplied both sides by the same term, same variable, or, you know, the integrating factor. So now we've got to figure out, okay, so so we can do this if we can find that term. That's that's the big thing. Can we find a term that satisfies this? So let's go over what exactly this is. There again, the standard form of a uh, first order linear differential equation, explaining what the integrating factor. So all the integrating factor is, you know, is a function by which an ordinary differential equation can be multiplied in order to make it easier to integrate. And in this case, what we're doing is where turning it into the product rule and then you know, taking the der antiderivative from there so we can actually work from there so the goal of an integrating factor is to put a differential equation into a form where you can get the antiderivative just rewording this so that's what we're trying to get to so we got to now we've just got to find what this term is what this integrating factor is for a first order linear differential equation so what we're going to do is we're going to prove out this integrating factor. So I just wrote it out complete now. We multiplied it through on both sides. So u of x times dy dx plus u of x times p of x times y is equal to u of x times f of x. So I just rambled off all of this. So what we have here again is you've got the variable and its derivative and then you've got a variable times its derivative or, or to say it more like the product rule the derivative of the first times the second variable plus the derivative of the second variable times the first variable. Now remember what the qualifications were on uh, on this integrating factor. It, you know, you need a term that completes the product rule. So the first thing it's going to do is going to serve as a variable. And then when multiplied by p of x, it has to be a derivative of itself, of, you know, of u of x. So what does this ultimately say? So we've got a derivative or well, what we're calling the derivative or u prime of x. Okay, so let's go ahead and start off here. So, so we got a u prime, we're saying this is the derivative with respect to x of the integrating factor. So u of x times p of x is equal to the derivative of x. That's the first thing it has to do. You know, serve as, or that's both what it has to serve, and it also has to serve as a, is the derivative. So excuse me, that's the second thing it has to do, has to serve as the derivative. But it also is a separable differential equation when you put it into this form. You know, it's because you got, when multiplied by p of x, it's, it's a derivative, and that happens to be a separable differential equation. So what we can do is we can separate the terms, you know, multiply both sides by d of x, and divide both sides by u of x. And we end up with uh, an equation like this. You know, p of x times d of x is equal to du over u of x since it's a, now we just go ahead and integrate both sides as we normally would. You know, antiderivative of p of x is equal to the antiderivative of du over u of x. Now, looking at the right side of the equation, we just take that the integral of p of x d of x is equal to the natural log of u of x. Okay, when we integrate that. So we, that's the natural log of u of x. Now, to get rid of that that natural log or the ln, just raise both sides to base e, okay? So this will cancel the, the, the natural log. And what do we end up? We end up with u of x, in order for this to work, has to equal to e raised to the integral of p of x d of x. That will have to be the integrating factor. 
So what we're saying is that u of x, this will work as the variable in our equation. When multiplied by d of x, or multiplied through, that u of x times p of x, or e raised to the p of x, d of x, is equal to a derivative of e of x, is equal to the derivative of the integrating factor. And if then, you, know, you do that by the chain rule, you'll see that that does work out to be true. So once we found the integrating factor, you know, and this will be a term or it will be you know, some sort of a, a value, some sort of, of number that we'll work with, usually it may have a variable in there, you know, a variable of x. But we can multiply through, realizing that this is a term or a variable. You know, so the, the variable of the first times, or a variable times the derivative of y is equal to the derivative of the integrating factor times y. So there you have it. You've got y, a derivative of y, and you've got the variable, which is the integrating factor. And this whole thing here, the integrating factor times p of x, is our derivative. So it satisfies the term. It is a variable, and it, when multiplied by p of x, it is also the derivative. And that is the product rule. No, we want to take the antiderivative of this. It will just be the integrating factor, which is the variable, times y, which is the second variable. Now, I hope that explains it care you know, explains it a little bit easier, uh, makes it easier to understand. You know, go ahead and give me a call or see me in class or office hours. And if it's not, you know, we can go over it a little bit more detail. But thanks for watching.